And Dr. Scott Jensen here. I just want to tell you from the get-go, this video is not Scott Jensen looking for vindication. I think the facts have already vindicated me. But I think there's an opportunity now after three years of COVID pandemic policies for us to step back, take a 30,000 foot view and say, what happened? Well, when I was running for governor of Minnesota, these were things that I said our administration would look like. Lockdowns wouldn't happen again. We'd put our children first. We would let science, real science, lead the way. We'd restore election integrity. We'd protect Minnesotans. We'd fund kids, not broken institutions. We'd protect Second Amendment rights, First Amendment rights. We'd support Minnesota families, and we'd reduce taxes and support small businesses. That's what I said. And for that, hit pieces came up. This is what it was said about Scott Jensen. He participated in the 2020 lie of the year because he said there was information out there stating that hospitals would receive more money if they diagnosed COVID-19. All right, figure that one out. Next, I said that COVID-19 deaths were being inflated. I think uh, Robert Redfield from the CDC, Tony Fauci, and Deborah Brooks have all commented on that already. I made misleading claims about COVID case counts. Do you remember Tony Fauci saying that if you did a PCR test and you cycled it 45 times, or you did it after COVID disease had already diminished, if you ran the cycles enough times, all you were gonna pick up was dead nucleotides, but you'd have a positive test, okay? Jensen forgot the source of a false claim he made in a viral video. Frankly, I didn't forget the source. There were so many sources saying things. And if you remember the New York Times, they said that up to 90% of people who tested positive for COVID-19 carried barely any virus. And Tony Fauci identified it as dead nucleotides. I cast doubts on COVID-19 death tolls. Well, I think that's pretty much global at this point. I fought over virus death toll in terms of the election battle. Yeah, our election in 2022 had a lot to do with COVID. Other people seized on some of my information, and that was supposed to be my fault. Of course they seized on my information. They felt that they were getting the perspective of a skeptical, in the trenches, everyday physician who had nothing to gain. Bottom line is, over and over again, what I said proved to be correct. But within the last few days, a gentleman named Justin Hart, who has a substack, and his substack is called Rational Ground. Rational Ground by Justin Hart. And he did this, and this is the title of his article, Using Chat GPT to Prove Lockdowns Sucked. So Chat GPT, it's the latest and greatest artificial intelligence. So he basically put artificial intelligence to the test. He went to a variation called Baby AGI, and that performs automated tasks using ChatGPT as its basis. And he said this, prove that COVID-19 lockdowns caused serious harms. And here's what artificial intelligence proved. It said, research the economic impacts on vulnerable populations. Analyze data to assess the effects of COVID-19 lockdowns on the public health outcomes. Identify social and psychological harms associated with lockdowns. Examine the impact of lockdowns on public services and infrastructure. Investigate the long-term consequences on lockdowns. Analyze the effects of lockdowns on civil liberties and human rights. Assess the effects of lockdowns on employment and the labor market. Determine the effects of lockdowns on education and child development. Compare the benefits and harms of lockdowns and synthesize research findings to draw conclusions about the effects of COVID-19 lockdowns. That's what artificial intelligence came up with. And then the artificial intelligence. This is not Republican or Democrat. And I think most makers of artificial intelligence would tell you that it leans slightly left. No matter. Here's what artificial intelligence says. My analysis of the impact of COVID-19 lockdowns. Firstly, lockdowns have caused significant mental health problems. 
Secondly, lockdowns have disrupted access to medical care. Thirdly, lockdowns have caused an increase in poverty and food insecurity. Finally, lockdowns have also caused an increase in child abuse. As a physician in the trenches, I can tell you that I've seen every one of those four. Every one of those four. And this is what artificial intelligence closes with. Overall, my analysis has shown that COVID-19 lockdowns have had serious negative impacts on public health outcomes in many countries. And then the artificial intelligence started spitting out even more task lists. Some of these Justin Hart had never thought about, nor had I. It goes on to list 49 specific items. Folks, I have said it over and over again. If they can do it to me, they can do it to you. This isn't about exonerating Scott Jensen. This is about the fact that we have lived through three hellacious years where government expanded. They cross-pollinated their efforts with Big Pharma on one side and Big Tech on another. We have learned so much about Twitter since Elon Musk purchased it. We learned just recently in an interview with Elon Musk that not only did government have easy and ready access to Twitter files, they actually had the ability to see the private direct messaging that so many of us thought was relatively sacrosanct. This isn't about politics. This is about the very preservation of our democratic republic. That's what we're talking about. My stars, even artificial intelligence gets that.